Hello drummers and other creatures. It's freezing cold in London today and I thought I'd warm things up a little bit by showing you how to play 16th note hand-to-hand -hand groove patterns with open hi-hats which sort of continues the theme of hi-hat sounds that I've been following lately. And we're going to play some barks, pea soups, splashes, whatever you want to call them. We get a few different sound options from playing 16th note grooves like this. Um, show don't tell, that's the... Uh, that's the thing, isn't it? Let's let's see what that sounds like. That's it. The hi hat splashes, pea soups. You can open the hi hat just on 1 16th and then close it quickly again. Or you can open the hi-hat for 2 16ths, in other words, an eighth note's worth. So we're going to look at some of those options and think about how we incorporate them into our vocabulary. So let's start with the 16th note pattern. Um, if you're doing this, I assume you could follow what I was doing in terms of the groove, but just in case um, we're playing single strokes, I'm going right, left, right, left, right, left on the hi-hat. I'm counting one E Anna, two E Anna, three E Anna, four E Anna. Well, that would be my main groove. For the purpose of the exercise, let's just count one E Anna, two E Anna, just to save a little bit of time and energy. One E Anna, two E Anna. The bass will be on the one and the snare on the two, just to get us going with a simple pattern. We'll change it as well. Um, once you've got the hang of all of this, you will be able to play the groove for uh, Paid in Full by Eric B. and Rakim. So if you happen to be from the 80s like me, this will give you that wonderful opportunity, which uh, if you keep watching this video, I might treat you to towards the end. So let's start off with our basic groove pattern. We're going to play... And to that, we're going to add our open hi-hat sounds. Now, uh, I usually like working my way from the end of the bar back to the front with this kind of thing, but I'll go from the front and move back uh, today just for, for variation, really. But let's start off with the longer open hi-hat sound, which will continue over two sixteenth notes. And what we're going to do is just explore the numbers, the downbeats, and then the ands, the upbeats of this. So we'd have... Um, Let's say on the one, I'm opening the hi-hat on the one and the E. So the hi-hat is open for the entire length of an eighth note or two of the sixteenths. Now, for longer open hi-hat sounds, I tend to play heel down and just lift the front of my foot because it allows that little swell of the hi-hats. Uh, a lot of people can play as well um, heal up and achieve the same effect, but I can't seem to do it. And it's something I'd like to work on. Uh, but again, whatever method works for you is cool. I just thought I'd bring that up just for thoroughness. So... Get a bit of a feel for that first. Make sure that you've got the one E open and then the and is closed. With any of these patterns, the thing that we're really trying to, to get the hang of is being able to open the hi-hat at the right time, not to open it too soon, not to close it too late. We want to be very precise with this. And it's a great way of um, sort of amplifying the coordination you have between your hands and feet, especially the hi-hat foot. Put the snare in. And then don't spend necessarily too much time thinking about it with just the, the hands and the hi-hat foot. Get the snare in there, get the bass drum in there, and if everything's lined up nicely, sit with that for a little bit.
See, it took me a little little while to get that lined up nicely. And uh, even when you feel like you can do something like this, when you slow yourself down, you realize that there can be little wibble wobble things in the coordination. And, uh, you know, maybe it's a good idea to work on those when you find them. Okay, so that was our one, let's do the and. Okay, now we're not going to play the open sound on the two because we're playing the snare already. We'll just do the two and, the and of two. And finally, let's open the hi-hat on both of the ands, and let's play a four to the floor and get a disco sound. All good, keep that going for a little bit. Um, once you get the hang of a particular open hi-hat sound, try and vary your bass drum patterns a little bit, the object being that you can then improvise around a given pattern. Uh, also, pay attention to the way you play the hi-hats when you're making the open sound. Um, depending on what kind of sound you're trying to make overall, uh, you might be playing tip of the sticks on top of the hi-hat. You might be playing the shoulders of the sticks on the edge. Uh, a lot of the time I would play this sort of thing with uh, tip of the sticks, but playing the, the edges for the open hi-hats to give a little bit of grit. But experiment with just keeping the, the tips on top of the cymbals for the open sounds as well. And you've got a much mellower um, kind of sizzly sound, I guess, that way. So um, be a little bit conscious of that. Once you've overcome the initial kind of uh, coordination issues, you can think about those other elements. Okay, next, let's do the opening only one sixteenth. Um, and this can be a little bit tricky coordination wise. So you want to really look at the interplay between your hands and feet. Um, if you've got the hang of playing eighth note open hi-hat sounds and you feel confident with your coordination there, I don't think the sixteenth notes really presents your body with any new challenges uh, that it's not used to. But because we're going to tend to play sixteenths at a faster tempo, you're trying to get all the movements in uh, a smaller space very often or a smaller time frame. So that can kind of challenge the accuracy of what you're doing. So be aware of that. Start off very, very slowly. Always that's that's my main motto. Um, and uh, see how it goes like that. But let's try, for instance, just opening the hi-hat on the one. So it would be something like this. Now, at this point, when I'm doing only a 16th open sound, I feel a lot more comfortable playing uh, heel up. It gives me more control. I'm not so concerned about the gradual opening sound because it's all very quick. But then playing heel up, hi-hat stuff, ooh, creaky chair. Uh, playing that heel up, uh, can sort of set you off balance depending on what you're doing with your bass drum. Now, ideally, I would learn how to really plant the weight into the stool so that you can have both heels up and not feel unbalanced or not too unbalanced, but uh, it depends where you're at. I'm, I'm still, again, working on my balance issues as, and many other things, right? But let's put the bass and the snare in, bass on one, snare on two, open hi-hat on the 16th, the very first 16th of our bar. Now, we can move on to the one E. And again, don't drive yourself potty with it, but it's a good idea to just practice the individual uh, hi-hat openings on their own, just with the hi-hat foot and the hands, just for a little bit. Uh, whenever I do something like that, that kind of scrutiny, 
it makes me recoil in horror and I think, oh, and I should be doing that a lot tighter. But it's quite good to stimulate the mind to, to be aware of these things, uh, our fallibilities or whatever. Okay, now we'll put the, the bass drum on the one, snare on the two. Uh, where was I? Okay, the one E now. Once you've got the hang of something like that, uh, just opening the hi-hat, the next thing to do would be to add a coincident bass drum note with your open hi-hat sound. Uh, and I find that probably more often than not when I'm playing, if I'm doing a little punctuated open hat, there'd probably be a bass drum note with it as well. But there are scenarios where, where you want to have that open hi-hat sound without a bass drum to accentuate it. And sometimes you do want the bass drum. So I sort of work through both options and get yourself comfortable with it. So let's see if I can do that. Just about got away with it. Okay, then next we're moving on to the one and. Again, a lot of scrutiny there. Uh, once I've got the hang of doing that open hi-hat without the bass, I'm now going to put the bass in there. Now, I don't uh, just have the delightful opportunity to listen to the little inaccuracies and imperfections in my coordination. Uh, I also get to think about a little bit how much do I need to open the hi-hat as soon as I go a little bit too far the sound becomes a little bit too mushy and indistinct uh, if I don't open it enough it's it's not quite sticking out it's it's not clearly executed so again it's it's a great way doing this sort of exercise to just fine-tune uh, the sound that you're getting out of your open hats and again I'm playing the sticks on top maybe I can try and do it now with the and still but digging in a little bit to the side of the cymbal. Okay, and again, oh, I'm not enjoying scrutinizing myself right now, but these are the sacrifices you have to make to help communicate to people. So I hope you appreciate it. And if you do appreciate it, by the way, aha, the marketing opportunity, please make sure you give me a thumbs up, make some comments about this video, and uh, very importantly, please subscribe to my channel so that you get to hear about all my wonderful new videos as they come out. Anyway, back to business. Let's look at, again, we'll go for the E of one. I don't really need to do all of these, do I? But the E of one, you get the idea of this. So. Ah, sorry, no, it's the art of one. What am I thinking? Okay, so... That's the essence of that. Next, you've got the, immediately after the snare, the uh, two E, then you've got the two and, and then you've got the two R. Again, do each one of those, why do I say again all the time? It's very annoying, I'm annoying myself now, but um, you've got each one of the, the possible sixteenths, I guess, apart from the two. And work on opening the hi-hat on its own and also playing the bass drum alongside it. Most importantly, to get this incorporated into your vocabulary, the thing to do is once you feel that you're getting the, the grip on some of, getting the grip, I don't know, once you're feeling that you're getting a little bit competent with these patterns, start improvising with them. Meaning you could just play a regular 16th note pattern and then try and throw some open hi-hat sounds in there and just see what happens.
So now you've got all of that happening, you're ready to go for paid in full, the 80s classic hip hop number, and uh, the, the beat was originally sampled from a song called uh, Ashley's Roach Clip, whatever that means, and um, we've got an open hi-hat sound on the end of two, which is the long one, and then we've got a short one on the end of three. So it's kind of a good one to get into to practice combining those two, two sixteenth open, one sixteenth open sounds. And uh, let's see if I can get this right. Uh, maybe I'll go into more depth on this particular groove uh, in a future video, but it just sounds like this. And again, for me, it brings to mind that maybe having to combine the heel down and heel up options to get those different sounds isn't ideal. And maybe at some point I need to get my head together and just work out how to more gradually open the hi-hat with a heel up thing. I don't know. Let's see. There's, there's only so many hours in the day. Anyway, that more or less wraps that one up. Or in fi well, it does. It totally wraps it up, actually. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful. Uh, the idea is really to kind of try and understand the, the methodology of exploring a particular range of movements that we do, working through it one step at a time, and then putting it together and improvising. That's really important because that's where you take some sort of brain wiring stuff and turn it into music that you can use. I hope you... Uh, made sense of that. Anyway, enjoy. Learn how to play all of these and let me know how you get on by commenting in the comment field below uh, and also let me know what else I could help you with. Um, go ahead, make my day. Now, time for you to get off and practice. <laughs>